Hey, Adam, this is Rob in Cape Town, South Africa. How are you doing? Good, how are you doing? Very good, thanks. Where are you at the moment? I'm at home in Los Angeles. Listen, it's been a big a big week for you guys over in the States, of course, uh, with the uh, Supreme Court's uh, ruling on marriage equality. What does it mean for you personally? Is it something that you could you could put into words? Well, I think, you know, I'm, I'm definitely a big advocate for human rights. Um, I think that it's something that we need to st- all strive for. You know, I think equality is, is, it sends the right message to children that, you know, everybody can be who they who they need to be. And um, I think that acceptance and tolerance are a big part of that. Um, even if it's something that you might not agree with, personally, I think that on like a legal human rights level, I think that we all need to recognize that we need to be treated equally under the law. And of course, uh, I mean, it's been, been great seeing the reaction coming through uh, largely, and there seems to be uh, acceptance uh, across most parts of the world and welcoming America to the 21st century as far as this particular uh, ruling is concerned. Great seeing the likes of Facebook awash with those rainbows as well. I agree, I agree 100%. Uh, listen, uh, it was uh, quite funny seeing your, your tweets over the course of the last uh, couple of days. Of course, uh, Dave Grohl had a lot to say ahead of Kanye West uh, performing at Glastonbury, uh, ahead of the performance, <laughs> saying it was either going to be the greatest or the worst thing ever. Uh, as it turns out, probably somewhere in the middle and uh, not not taking a liking to his uh, very short cover, and thankfully it wasn't any longer, of uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just... It, it seems a little out of place. <laughs> uh, now, talking about uh, Queen, of course, ha- has has performing with Queen over the course of the last couple of years, uh, since your American Idol days and, and moving on since then, has that in any way changed uh, how you how you view music, how you perform, how you how you deal with the subject matter that you deal with? I yeah, I definitely I was very 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 happy with the way the tour worked out. Um, I had so much fun, first of all, on stage with these guys. Uh, it really, it really revived my love for performing. I mean, um, you know, I've always loved it, but getting up on stage with these incredible pieces of music and amazing musicians, and 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 for fans that really love the band and love these songs, it was, it was, it was. I don't know how to describe it. It was, um, it kind of just re-energized me. It was great. It was really good for me. And in terms of uh, the impact that that they, that may have had on on the new material, on the new album, on original high, has it had any kind of impact? I mean, I think sonically, my album's quite different than a lot of the, the Queen catalog. But I think that that in exploring the Queen's catalog of, of hits, what I realized was is they don't really stick to one genre particularly, and I, I respect that a lot. They they experimented, they moved around um, different styles, and you know they got into the you know their early stuff was very operatic and baroque and then they went into you know southern kind of arena rock and then they had their funk moment and then they had their 80s they had like kind of synth influence in their music i mean this is a band that yes they played heavy metal in the 70s but they're they're also a pop band you know they understood that that trends change and that people's ears shift and they they were really good about that and that's something that i'm very inspired by and of course uh, i was reading uh, at some point i think it was during the course of uh, may this uh, this past this past may uh, brian may talking about uh, you and how keenly uh, the guys are watching your your solo career uh, blossom and at the moment kind of brushing off any kind of uh, thoughts of p- perhaps new music with queen is that something that you perhaps have secretly privately been thinking about or, or wishing for um, you know, I, I'm I'm just so thrilled that I get to share the stage with them and get to sing their 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 songs that everybody knows. I mean, that to me is such a treat. Um, and we have more shows coming up in September in South America, so I'm really looking forward to those. All right, and as far as American Idol goes, the final season, of course, announced uh, to be taking place in 2016. Do you think there's still a platform for those kind of uh, talent shows going forward? Yeah, I definitely. I mean, I think people want to, to want to watch talent. I think that that. People obviously turn their TVs on and they want to see what's going on. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I, I'm very thankful to the show for for it launching me. Um, I think I think it's it's a tricky thing. I think for the artists going into a show like that because you can't just rely on the show to start your career. I think at this point, it's a great launching pad, but you have to also have a, like a game plan for after. That's and, and in many ways, that almost might be even harder than than competing on the show.
Now, you've certainly come a long way since then. What was that? Back to 2009 uh, with the current album out right now. And uh, the single, by the way, Ghost Town, I don't know whether you've been made aware of this in South Africa at the moment, is the most downloaded single and has been that way for the last four weeks. It's so exciting. I'm so I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled. I hope I get a chance to come down there. Number one on our official uh, Kia Top 40 SA with iTunes charger across both Joburg and in Cape Town. We've got uh, so many questions that came through via Twitter, and I always love this because you can tell the true fla- the true, true fans out uh, from the West when they get very specific about uh, certain uh, tracks that haven't yet been released off the album. So we're just going to run yeah. through run through a couple of those those tweets very quickly. Uh, Blinky WTF on Twitter wants to know about the bonus tracks Shame and These Boys uh, why are they so different in tone and as a follow up uh, what, was that a direction that you considered taking for the entire album you know it was, it was I think when I was in the recording process those songs came up and they were kind of no brainers because they felt familiar they felt like songs that I had you know in a style that I had explored already in the past and I think Shortly after we, those were some of the earlier recordings, and shortly after we finished them, we kind of stumbled onto what I feel was something a little bit more fresh for me, something that I hadn't really explored before. So I loved the songs so much, so I figured, well, I'm going to still put them on the album because they're really fun. And I think that fans uh, who have been fans for a long time will really appreciate these songs. And um, But they didn't feel like they were a part of the, the 11 album tracks which felt like they were in a different they're just in a different tone emotionally uh, sticking to the theme of uh, tonality at Josie Rose on Twitter loves your vocal style on verses of uh, another lonely night uh, can you talk uh, more to that yeah that was a you know that was a very interesting song to record I mean I think it's an emotion that we all have felt before um, I certainly um, as a single person who lives alone I, I have nights sometimes where I'm like here I am again by myself. Um, <laughs> and it's interesting because it is a bit melancholy, but then that chorus kicks in and it's super uplifting and euphoric. So, you know, I think that the idea was to kind of juxtapose the sadness with, with that dance energy. And hopefully that dance energy is kind of the thing that can pull you out of, of a sad moment. And speaking of the sadness and the melancholy, uh, at Marissa underscore 965, do you ever get sad listening to your own songs? I suppose the first question should be, do you listen to your own songs once you've produced it and put it out there? Yeah, I definitely do. But, you know, at that point, once I've recorded, I think I start, I'm listening with a different ear. At that point, I'm listening more as, as a perfectionist once I've recorded it. I think my emotion comes out while I'm singing. Not, not so much while I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> you know, of course, the South African fans want to know when you'll be back. You were last year in, in 2012. Well, I don't know yet, actually. Not for sure. But uh, now knowing that the album and the single are doing, uh, that are, you know, they're so popular down there, it's definitely um, on the priority list of a place I need to visit. Um, and a tour is something that I really want to put together. I don't have anything to, set, to say yet about that. I don't have anything set up. But please know that it is something that I really, really want. So hopefully soon. All right, Adam, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thank you.